What is art? This shouldn't take long. I mean, we all know art when we see it, right? Is art representing reality? What reality? Objects? What about this train? Versus this train? Is one art and one not? Personally, I think one does a fine job of showing me what a train looks like. But this one tugs at my soul to ponder about the gains and losses of industrialization and technological advancement and envelops me in squeaking wheels and the noisy release of steam. But maybe that's just me. Is one art and one not? For starters, you would have to define art. Good luck with that. Oh, hang on, that's what we're trying to do now. Oh, all right, please do watch on. Picasso said the purpose of art is washing the dust of daily life off our souls, but cleverly he didn't define what art itself was. Is it possible to define art? Oxford Dictionaries thinks it's the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination, typically in a visual form such as a painting or sculpture, producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. Not bad. Now define beauty. That should be easy. Beauty is often seen as symmetry, like the Parthenon, or in this face. No, that's too narrow. The pillars of creation are beautiful, well to me, and although they have a repetition, they are not symmetrical. Beauty is in skill, perhaps. I don't know. The screen is considered to be art, but it's not particularly skillful nor symmetric and the only emotion it tugs at is disquiet. So we might broaden our thinking into anything that represents objects and reality well. And to be fair, this was the thinking for thousands of years. From cave paintings, is mammoth, hmm, to earlier paintings with non-existent perspective, but all of the right parts. How could they not see this? to illustrative pictures that adorned churches, complete with halos to represent piety or sainthood, then to the masters, Rembrandt's faces, Joseph Wright's painting of light, Klimt painting mood and love, Hopper painting inner struggles, Monet painting, well, haystacks. Or maybe this one, to which you might say, it's just an illustration. Just, did you get that? Loaded, hey. We can tell the difference at the extremes, perhaps, but would find it harder in the middle. But compare all that to, say, this Rothko, and you might think, really? That's really art? Says who? And maybe it sneaks in at the emotional power end of the scale. After all, people do stop and look at these. And Mondrian. What a palaver it was when it was discovered that one of his paintings had been hung upside down for years. Ah, some say, it's all a con. It was never art at all. Well, that's what I reckon. And here at last we are a bit closer to the right question. Says who? Who says whether it's art or not? Paintings we now recognise as the epitome of art like Monet's impression, Sunrise, were derided by absolute experts, such as the well-respected art critic, Louis Leroy. A preliminary drawing for a wallpaper pattern is more finished than this seascape. And other illustrations, drawings or paintings which represent objects in almost stylized exactness, say Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man, are now rightly recognized as art. And sure, I say rightly recognised, but again, by whom? Maybe it's the passage of time that counts. Nothing will increase the value of an artwork more than the death of its creator. There's no more coming, the well has dried up, and the economics of scarcity play a role in valuing art. Value, hmm, that's hard too. Van Gogh painted comfortable art and uncomfortable art but almost no one recognised it as art during his lifetime. But let some decades go by, let someone discover him again, and out of nowhere he becomes recognised and becomes one of the most loved artists of all time. His paintings now sell for millions. Too bad he never knew. And if beauty is a part of art, 
and beauty is in the eye of the beholder, then almost certainly art is also in the eye of the beholder. I mean, if we can't rely on the experts of Monet's time, maybe it is just up to us, after all. And in one sense, that's always been the case. I don't know art, but I know what I like. Started off being something that artistic Philistines said. But maybe, in the end, maybe it's the only valid judgement. Well, at least it's the only one that matters to us personally. You walk into a gallery, for example, the Italian section at the Louvre, and after a while you are overwhelmed with rich, dark, gorgeous paintings, one after another, showing off the technical skills, even genius, of the artists. And then you turn a corner, like I did once, and notice a small painting. For me, it was a made-up scene imagining the carpenter's workbench of Jesus which I now can't find, so here's a still life by Cezanne. And you find yourself lost for 20 minutes. Why? What causes a painting to connect while thousands of others are just nice or awful or magnificent or at best a preliminary drawing for a wallpaper pattern? If we rely simply on our own judgement though, maybe we would never work at understanding harder art like Rothko or Jackson Pollock. There's a tendency, because it's not readily clear at all what is going on, to assume that no one else does either. That it's all an elaborate Ponzi scheme, where no critic is going to call out the Emperor's new clothes. The classic trope of the two art critics outdoing each other with hyperbolic deep analysis of an artwork, only to find out it's part of the gallery's lighting system. It must be hard to be an established critic, particularly during a time of rapid change like the last 100 years in art. I sometimes think critics are so afraid of being the Louis Leroy of their time, remembered only for missing a major movement in art, that they are too ready to accept anything. For example, and with all respect, Magritte's ready-made sculpture, Fountain, does nothing for me. I have to be honest. But then I don't have a reputation at stake in saying so, and later finding out that it struck deep chords of some future generation, making me look foolish. Something like this constable is far easier to admire. It's skillful, beautiful, at least to me, expertly rendered, wonderfully composed, hitting all the right buttons for both beauty and emotional response. Is this art? Most would say absolutely. So what about this Jackson Pollock? For some, maybe even most, it's just a spilled paint pot. But for others, Blue Poles has been described by one critic as an infinite regression into multiple layers of reality, islands of form and unnerving whites falling away into foaming creams, frothing to the surface before being carried down again into the impenetrable depths. Who talks like that? Uh, oh, oh, that was me. Better watch my video on that, I suppose. Link in the description. Actually, there's links in the description to many of the artworks I've mentioned so far. Of course, I've left whole movements out. Japanese art, with all its focus on simplicity and form. Bauhaus, with its recognition that art happens within design as well, and architecture, clothing, tapestry, and on and on. A narrow definition of art leaves too much out. But if you bring in too much, maybe everything is art, and that also becomes meaningless. So what is art? Art is something that artists create. This is not a trick answer. There is something about intent in great art. The earliest cave paintings were not a method to keep track of kills. You could have done that with a mark. They were an attempt to, with skill and intent, convey something of the hunt to someone else. At its heart, art is a form of communication, maybe one of the best we have. In a world drowning in words, text and now digital artificial intelligence created images, art is communication from one soul to another. We can look at the veins of Michelangelo's David and see the mark of a human being from centuries past. We can stand in front of the starry night and I'm not being spooky here, sense the moment of its creation, realising that Vincent stood where you stood, contemplating this painting just like you are. Even in amateur artists like me, 
If you spend a moment looking, you will see more of me in the self-portrait done by Mirror over a couple of hours than I could probably get across to you in any other way. Art stirs something within us, a connection between human beings. Great art makes us ponder deeper things. Our first connections with art are often superficial and based on our perception of how good the artist is at representing reality. But rather than just leaving us marvelling at technical achievement, and of course art does that, great art takes us deeper. This is why Constable can be enjoyed, Turner can be poignant, Rothko can be pondered, Pollock can say things we can't describe, Hopper can cut deep, Wyeth can make us think of the rich tapestry of life, Munch can disturb us, but not as much as Goya, and Klimt can leave us basking in a warm golden moment. Art takes us on the journey, if we want it. Art is the artist saying to you, I see things like this, do you too? Or at least, do you see something you hadn't seen before? But that's just what I reckon. Am I even close? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. See you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please press like. If you want to be notified when I put out more reactions to great art, please subscribe. See you next time.